This is the on-site uh, on interview in reference to RFP number P-19-025, State Government Affairs Services on-site interviews. And as this is an interview, we do welcome any dialogue. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and have the committee introduce themselves, and then we'll turn the floor over to you. I have introduced Director of Government Affairs. Jessica Scheffler, Assistant Vice President of Public Affairs. Richard Clark, Capital Resource Officer. And I'm Darren Parker, Contracts and Procurement Specialist. You're all Marty. Marty Fiorentino. Joe Mobley. John Delaney. Shannon Schusler. Mark Pinto. So if you want to just go ahead and um, kick it off, I think you received uh, some questions that procurement had sent out ahead of time. Maybe if you wanted to just briefly touch on on those and then we can go from there. Sure, thank you. Well, we're delighted to be here. Uh, for almost uh, 20 years, we've had the honor and privilege of representing the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. And we've seen the authority through some interesting times and now what's going on couldn't be more exciting in transportation in general and both here at the authority with the U2C. You know, when you look at autonomous vehicles, uh, drones, uh, uh, Hyperloop, uh, and all that's going on in the world of transportation has probably never been as exciting in really in my lifetime, certainly, as it is today. So we're delighted to be here and to be a part of all of that. Uh, we're local, you know that. Uh, we have offices here on the uh, South Bank, and we also have offices in Tallahassee, new offices that Shannon's anchoring, uh, which are really a, a we can, World Series time, so you could easily throw a baseball and hit the Capitol from where we are. Um, you've met the team members, you know us, and we know you, and uh, we want to take this opportunity really just to go over some of the questions that you have, and I think I'd like to give a little introduction that will answer those questions, and then we'll do some of the, have some of the other team members uh, uh, talk. We like to think that we're a part of the fabric of this community, and not only with the JTA and all that you've done and the exciting things that are going on here, uh, but also with other things going on in Jacksonville. We also like to think that the, when we're successful, the JTA is successful, when the JTA is uh, successful, we're successful. We also contribute to this community. When you have employees that have issues uh, and we find out about those, or you're kind enough to tell us, you know, we participate in those. When you have annual meetings, we help with that. When you have uh, transit-oriented development meetings, we like to participate in that. So we're delighted to be able to do that. and. Uh, I think it's important now with what I said about transportation and all that's going on, this is for state government relations, we understand that, but as we found out in the last few months, everything's intertwined. It's integrated, the federal, the state, the local, and if you've got a project like the uh, U2C, you're going to find all of that uh, uh, at, at stake. Um, when hiring a lobbyist, I think two things are important, relationships and knowledge of the process, and that was part of your questions. And I'd like to talk about uh, the relationships that we have with members, uh, whether it's, uh, I'll talk about Bill Galvano, the Senate President. Mark Pinto uh, volunteered for his campaign when he was in high school. Uh, Mark worked for, uh, for Representative Bill Galvano, and now he's come back and in the Senate, he's Senate President. So leadership is important. I've seen Mark and Senator Galvano, and he treats Mark like a son, and we've been very successful in the last few years. President-designate Wilk Wilton Simpson. Uh, I haven't had this happen before, but uh, when I sh hired Shannon, uh, he called to say uh, what a terrific person Shannon was and congratulated us on the hire of Shannon. Uh, Northeast Florida and appropriations. Uh, Senator Rob Bradley and Representative Travis Cummings. Uh, Joe knew them before they probably ever ran for office for the county commission. So we've worked with them there and now we work with them in the legislature. I venture to say that Joe's known the two of them longer than anybody in the, in the process in Tallahassee. Uh, Representative Renner, who was slated to be uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, Representative Renner, uh, I think his father baptized John, and uh, when my mother passed away, it was Representative Renner's father who was one of the first ones at the funeral home. So we know these folks. Uh, Senator Gibson, you've got to be bipartisan, and particularly in the Senate. Now, Senator Gibson's family to us. We've known her for many, many years, back from her uh, time here in, in Jacksonville on the council. 
And then Senator Travis Hudson, he interned for us before he was a state senator. Uh, he's now chairman of the TED Committee in the Senate. Uh, we represent his family. So we know these people very, very well, and uh, uh, we consider them not just professional friends, but personal friends. And then Representative Jay Turnbull, Trumbull in the House. Shannon has known Representative Trumbull and his father for many, many years. I want to use an example to kind of illustrate this, uh, and that is when uh, my wife's into horses. So every year for a charity, an equine charity that she's involved with, we have a Kentucky Derby party. You can see anyone from Mayor Curry and Molly there to uh, Senator uh, Bradley and his wife Jennifer uh, to Representative Cummings uh, to uh, Representative Renner and uh, his wife Adriana and then uh, uh, also uh, Senator Hudson and his family. Why do they come? It has nothing to do with politics. They're our friends and uh, they come because uh, we're friends. They trust us. I think that's what we bring to the table that's most important. These legislators and people in leadership in the House and the Senate, they know us, they know us professionally, but they also know us personally and they trust us when they're talking to us and we're talking to them. Uh, the governor's office, so that talks about the legislative branch. Let me talk for a minute about the governor's office. Uh, when Mary and I moved to our farm, uh, one of the first folks to come and give us a present was Congressman Ron DeSantis and his wife Casey. They brought us a cat. Uh, we called the cat uh, the congressman. Now we had to call it the governor. So we've known the governor for, and his wife for many, many years before this. Shane Strum, the governor's chief of staff, uh, who was also Governor Christ's chief of staff. John and I got to know him very, very well during those years. And still, to, and, and even when he left the governor's office, went back into private practice, uh, went back into business, I should say, and then came back, we know him very well. Uh, Stephanie Kapalousis. Uh, the legislative director for the governor. Uh, Stephanie, as you know, Richard, you remember this, when she was Tilly Fowler's aide. And so all that time she was secretary of the Florida Department of Transportation and Shane Strum's wife was the general counsel uh, for the Florida Department of Transportation. We basically lived with her and then the assistant secretary, Kevin Tebow, during the Sunrail sale, which you'll remember, which we were involved with on behalf of CSX. So we were in the foxhole with them every week if not two or three times a week. Joe remembers those days, so we know her well. When she came back to Clay County to become the county manager, and it was time for her to hire a lobbyist, she hired our firm. We still represent Clay County to this day. And then Secretary, all politics is local, Secretary Evans. Uh, I can tell you, uh, since uh, Shannon has been with us, I can't tell you how many times they speak uh, because A, we'll have a client that's got an issue in, this, in the district, or he's got a question or ask a favor of her to help with either with the central office or with a, 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 someone who's not even a client of ours. So we feel that our relationships are second to none and uh, we stand by those. Second I mentioned was knowledge of the process. Uh, I can tell you that when it comes to appropriations, we track appropriations and our ratio of appropriations that we request, appropriations that we re our clients received, and appropriations that the governor signed. I, I would say that our ratio uh, in the last few years is, is higher, higher than anyone in the state, and well above 80 percent, 85 percent. We track that. It's all metrics. At the end of the day, this is a business, and we know that if we're going to continue representing uh, clients, continue to represent the JTA, we've got to perform and otherwise uh, they're not going uh, to keep us. We track our client retention. Our client retention is well over 85%. So when a client comes and, and engages our firm, they continue to engage us over time. And we know that you know, they, they have a lot of, uh, and you have a lot of uh, options that you can go with. Uh, we track that and we're very proud of that ratio. Um, Joe, as you know, was a legislative aide. I don't need to, you know us, but you know, Joe worked for two legislators. Mark, I've told you about Bill Galvano. Shannon, several years, seven years, was with the Florida Department of Transportation, most recently as Chief of Staff uh, under uh, Governor Scott. So, great experience, and I don't need to say anything about the guy on the other end of the table. Uh, you know, the Better Jacksonville plan, about 1.5 billion of that was roads. Is that about right, John? Uh, Partnership with the JTA, yeah. Um, and then when you talk about, so our, our relationships are strong, our knowledge of the process, not just the legislative process, but the appropriations process is strong. And then if you have uh, 
we think because we're local, we provide some added value. So when you have an issue with, uh, you know, I, I venture to say some of the other firms you interview, they may not even know who Jim Knight is. You know, I've known Jim Knight since he was in high school. So I would say that our knowledge of the process and uh, coupled with our relationships are second to none. And I know there were some other questions you asked, one about conflicts and successes, and I'll turn to Joe to talk about that. Sure, and, and as far as conflicts go, I, I, we, we've had them. As you guys know, we've, uh, just last session, there was an issue with transportation disadvantaged, a new pot of money that was created, and uh, it, it was created for transportation network companies, of which we represent Uber, as you guys well know. And, um, you know, we came to you and them and kind of talked through it, and it actually ended up presenting an opportunity where we had a direct line of communication. It turns out Uber wasn't even behind the legislation. Um, but uh, in that case, it actually bridged a gap between the JTA and, and a private company, uh, and, and the conflict resolved in that way. And of course, if, if uh, either side of a, if we're ever in a rare situation of having a conflict um, and it can't be worked out, we will bow out of that issue um, quickly. Uh, the last thing we want to do is sell one client against another. So um, as far as the successes, uh, going back a long time, we've helped create the uh, Regional Transportation Commission. Uh, I, I probably about 10 times now clarified that we're a state agency uh, <laughs> in statute. Um, uh, worked with the autonomous vehicle legislation that ended up passing last year. We worked on that for several years and then uh, we also try to be really responsive. I know last year there was a, an issue with a uh, surtax that was targeted at Miami-Dade County, and uh, I, I can't remember, Jessica, if it was you or Ivan, but you reached out, and we went right to Chairman Renner over uh, Ways and Means and, and resolved that and made sure that JTA would not be affected if, if that law were to pass. So, um, you know, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you guys and, and representing you for a long time, and, and we obviously hope that we continue that. Uh, go back to Marty and obviously if any questions please let us know. Maybe we just take a breath right here. I don't know if John or Shannon or Mark, do you have anything you want to add? And then you probably have some questions for us. Uh, I know one of the questions you asked was, what if there was a client that didn't have the relationships and you needed to, to move uh, an issue in Tallahassee? And I'll just address that now. I think the good thing is that the client wouldn't be you all because three of you up there have lots of relationships both locally here and at the school. But I think lobbying is as much of anything as message development. And if we can help develop the message working with our clients, then that makes the lobbying a lot easier regardless of the relationships. So I think that's really, really important because if you have a bad message, I don't care who you know, you're not going to get anywhere. If you have a good message, even if you're not that close to someone in the legislature, you're going to be heard, and if it's articulate and it's crisp and clear, uh, it makes a difference. Uh, I'll say one thing. I think uh, when we started in the last uh, representative the JTA, our practice has grown, as you know, and so has our uh, team. Uh, in the last two years, in fact, we brought on four new people, not the least of which is Shannon and her expertise in the transportation environment. I think that brings our, even in, and John, of course, that, that makes our transportation practice even stronger. We're even stronger today than we were last year and the, and the year before. Uh, we also brought on, we looked at, we wanted a, a young staff person, and so we looked at all the staffers in the legislate, uh, local delegation and brought on Davis Bean. Uh, Davis couldn't be here today, but he does a terrific job for us. And then I think that, our, again, our transportation practice is, is second to none. It's not only got a statewide uh, reputation, but also a national reputation now with some of the work in, in Washington. And the last I'll say this, when working with the governor's office and Shane Strum and Stephanie Kapaloosas and the governor himself, uh, last session I got called by Shane to come and help with a grant that the state needed at USDOT with the Tamiami Trail, it was 60 some million dollars. And so this wasn't a client that we represented, it was the state of Florida. And I was able to go and, uh, and successfully help uh, get that grant over the finish line. And so that's helpful to us with all of our clients when we're able to do things like that for the governor and the governor's office. Uh, and with that, at this time, I really will uh, sit tight. And, and let me add one other thing, and I, you probably know this because it's all public record, but 
Uh, we also don't represent any other trans transportation authorities or transit authorities, and uh, so I should have mentioned that with the conflict section, but I uh, wanted to make sure we were clear on that as well. Finally, if I can just toss in and jump off that, that I joined a little over a year ago. <coughs> and um, virtually all the other firms, the lobby or law firms in town I've talked to, both locally and statewide, and one of the things that impre has always impressed me here, I'd hired this firm when I was in City Hall and uh, also at UNF, was the integrity with which they, they do the job. Y'all have been around long enough to know that every few years in Tallahassee, some scandal wipes through and it's often tied to some lobbyists. And uh, I've always been impressed with the, the way this firm has handled those kinds of handled clients and handled the process and um, and turns down clients that they don't think fit or they don't want to try to sell that message. I know that the representing and carrying the water for Jacksonville, including the JTA, is really, really important to the firm. And, um, um, you know, I, for many years, for 12 years, really, I was appointing the, the local representatives to the JTA. And, had appointed later Mayor John Payton was on the JTA and the Chief Judge now Mark Mahan is one of my closest friends and one of the things that he kind of allowed me to see from the inside is that the JTA has always done things with class whether it was a road project the landscaping on them the construction the, uh, the way the things are done the planning and, um, and so we really would be proud to continue to represent the JTA. Well, thank you and I um, really appreciate you all being here really appreciate your time um, we obviously um, know how you all work. We've worked very closely with you over the last couple of years. You and one other firm have that benefit and some may say, you know, advantage because we do know the quality of work and the relationships that we have with you. Um, we're at a point now where um, we are going to go to one firm, which is one of the reasons why we're going through this process at all. And then the other reason um, is the, you know, just timing and needing to put it out for, you know, bid again to see what's out there. Um, so the question that I'm asking each of the firms, we have, as you know, the U2C, um, you're very familiar with that. The total of that project is going to, once built out, the 10 miles will be around, we're told, $300 million. Um, at the same time, we're also, and obviously that funding comes at the FED, from the federal, a lot of it, most of it will come from the feds, a lot of it comes from the state, and then, you know, obviously we have our local dollars in it as well. We are in um, very preliminary conversations. Well, we have, as you know, we've done the commuter rail study over the years between St. John's County, well, actually between multiple counties in here to sort of see the feasibility about where the most demand might be. And so one of the things that we're talking about now is um, uh, we're kind of at a point where we want to talk about commuter rail between from St. John's County into Duval. And so that obviously is going to be a big price ticket as well. And so um, just want to understand kind of what your thoughts are on that. I know you touched on your relationship with the governor's office and all of that, we know that whoever's in that position, especially on these larger projects, in addition to the FDOT secretary is gonna be, you know, he has the veto pin. So just wanted to sort of get your thoughts on kind of those two large projects um, because, you know, there, there may be a perception that they could compete against each other, even though we do believe there's separate buckets of money for each. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there and kind of understand, like, what would your approach to that be, I guess, is what I would. Anybody would take that? I could just go back to the history a little bit. A similar situation was on behalf of CSX when we worked on, on the SunRail transaction. It was kind of a, obviously a unique thing to Florida where the government was going to go purchase 60-plus miles of rail to, to operate commuter rail. And uh, we were kind of in at the beginning of that and worked it through a uh, pretty tedious process, uh, but ultimately um, resulted in a pretty good product, I think. And obviously now SunRail is, is going and the ridership continues to grow every year. And, uh, and I think they're now going to do their south expansion next, I think, Shannon. So uh, we, we do have some experience there in that, in that area. Um, as far as funding goes, so that's... In my opinion, you got to, the governor's really got to be our leader on that. 
we've got to get to him beforehand and have him create that idea. And I think with, with St. John's County being his former congressional district, there's a possibility he might be open to something. So well, that would be my opinion. Yeah. Of course, each layer of government, you add a difference. You add an extra zero to the end of whatever the dollar amount is. And, and, um, <laughs> um, and the, the centrality of power is now anchored in northeast Florida between the, the, the budget heads in the House and the Senate and the governor, of course, coming from here. So we haven't really had a lucky confluence like that really since John Thrasher and Jim King were Speaker of the House and President of the Senate 20 so years ago. And um, so it's a good opportunity to be able to try to leverage that and leverage those relationships. Uh, uh, I know in that Better Jacksonville plan, there was a, some condemnation money to try to early on get some of those right of way secured uh, before the dollar values went up because they're obviously a lot more now than they were 20 years ago. But um, uh, so there's the condemnation work, there's the coordination between the multiple counties. We've got those ties in St. John's and Clay counties already. And uh, so uh, I, I think it'd be a, a good marriage. I think that big ideas like that, you have to, st as Joe said, you have to start early. It's public record, you know we represent St. John's County. But also with, and as John referenced, the confluence of power, which right now is a moment in time uh, for Northeast Florida. It's time to be talking to uh, Senator Hudson when he's chairing Ted, and who knows where he goes next with his uh, in, in leadership in the Senate, and then also with Representative Renner, because you're now moving into his area, which you know might have some appeal to him. Well, and, and to that point, which I give you guys a lot of credit for, um, uh, Jessica, you and I, and I think Ivan as well, took Mr. Ford in to meet with Representative Renner way back before he clinched the, the speaker's race and briefed him on, on U2C and that it was coming down the pike. And I think it's kind of cool now that we can actually show something. You know, it wasn't just talk. We, we went in and briefed him early and uh, and the money has started flowing and I, I think it's something that, that he'd be interested in continuing. I know the federal contract is separate but uh, obviously we've got another moment in time there with the, the National Secretary of Transportation and the ties that she has to personally to Marty and, the, um, and Senator McConnell as well so um, it's got to come from three different pots to make something like that that big to work out. Um, I'll just I'll ask the same question I asked in the, for the previous team and Marty you and I have spoken this because what you see it on the federal and the mayor brought it up and you're seeing now that USDOT department moving more into diversify their funding and instead of trying to break the barriers between bus rail and moving more to the mobility specter FDOT well the current governor has moved forward with the bill that was fast looking. The department still is a little bit slow on that. How would you, for the long term vision of JTA and all these projects we have, what would be the best way to move forward and start incorporating funds or restructuring programs to not just have a rail and a bus but really a mobility center type funding scheme? I think the biggest thing we can do is listen to where we, we've seen in the last two years DOT, US DOT go here with funding and here and here are our priorities. I don't mean it in a bad way, but you know, rural priorities. Uh, we, we've heard recently, well, there's not enough transit, we're not giving out enough money in the transit area. Um, so, and then transit oriented development is going to be, as you well know, you had a seminar on it, it's going to be a big deal. And there's going to be funds for transit oriented development and also projects that are have connectivity and mobility around transit-oriented development. So for right now, this moment in time, I know that is a, a, a theme at USDOT that for this project you just talked about going down to uh, St. John's County that we really ought to look at. Uh, and particularly with the growth, the growth pattern is, is, is almost a straight line uh, down that way. So that could be, uh, some, that's something we ought to look at, look at more and listen to where is, where the, where, where is DOT looking at giving money? I know we do that, you do that, and then where can we fit into that? that because as you said with the mobility piece, uh, there's a lot of opportunity right now. Now that could change in a year, but for right now that's, that, that's a, a good place to go. Richard, do you have anything? 
Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask the same question I did last time. Yeah. Didn't ask question zero. Okay. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you all have or any questions that you might have for us that we can? One thing I would say just, you know us all. You're not scared to call any of us. You can wring all our necks. We're not, there's no one hiding in the firm or there's no one that you can't reach at any time. And, and so we'd like to continue to be that for you. And um, you can always reach, uh, you know, to the top of the firm or, or anywhere else if you, need, if you need us. And so I just want to reiterate that, that, that we're always available to you. So that was one of the reasons that I know Marty wanted to staff up was to make sure we could keep the contacts with those clients that we have lined up. Well, thank you very much. And again, I really appreciate you all being here and really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.